Welcome to our unit on organic chemistry. I hope you'll find this unit interesting, and I'm not going to say it's going to be an easy unit, but many students do find it to be a bit of a breather in between studying things like electrochemistry and thermochemistry. The purpose of this video is to put organic chemistry into context, kind of talk about what it is, how it's relevant to Alberta, and kind of see the big picture. So organic chemistry is basically a branch of chemistry that is devoted to studying organic compounds, a certain class of chemicals that we call organic compounds. And this is not the kind of organic that you think it means, because normally we use organic in the context of naturally grown foods. That's absolutely not what it means, not even close. Although that name may have been sort of derived from the same sort of basis, I guess. But for our purposes, organic is basically going to mean carbon-containing. So compounds that contain carbon are going to be, for us, organic compounds. Now, it's not every single molecule that contains carbon. There are some exceptions, and we're going to talk about them in more detail later. And you may also be thinking to yourself, why carbon? What is so special about carbon that gives it this whole branch of chemistry? And we're also going to talk about that in more detail later. That's not going to be covered extensively on this video. What we will talk about briefly is where these carbon compounds are found, where they're from, because that'll give us a little idea of their relevance in the world around us. So the main source of carbon-containing compounds or organic compounds is living things or previously living things. This is where most carbon-containing compounds are found. And you should already have some hints as to why. You should know a few sort of reactions that involve carbon compounds. And I'm going to think about a few of them right now. If I mention photosynthesis, or cellular respiration for that matter, what kind of compounds does that bring to mind for you? What kind of chemicals are involved in photosynthesis and respiration? And you should be thinking to yourself, well, plants breathe in CO2, carbon dioxide. That's a carbon-containing compound. They combine that with water, they make glucose. That's another carbon-containing compound. And cellular respiration basically does the opposite and produces oxygen. But these are the two big carbon-containing compounds that are involved there. And we know that photosynthesis and respiration are kind of two opposite reactions that are pretty fundamental to life, both plant and animal life. So that tells us right there that carbon is going to be involved, has a critical role in the support of life. Now, plants and animals, living things, don't just pass around these carbon-containing molecules for fun. They actually use them, right? So what do we do with glucose? Well, our bodies are made up of these carbon-containing compounds. Like, for example, proteins are carbon-containing compounds. Nucleic acid, which is what our genes are made up of. Carbohydrates. And so if we take those things to a bigger scale, these are the sort of things that make up our cell walls that actually build our bodies and, and plants themselves. So these organic compounds, they're all around us in the world of life, and they're super important. Now, you take all those carbon things in living organisms, and you compress them under super high pressure, under from something like a global flood, for example, and what do they produce? Fossil fuels. And so our reserves of fossil fuels are basically made up of carbon-containing compounds as well. And these I would call hydrocarbons. And these are also super important for our society, not so much for the building blocks of life, but it's what we rely on to operate our society, right? We basically do two things with fossil fuels. We burn them for fuel. Uh, so for example, we can heat our homes with them. We drive our cars with them. That's all fossil fuels. And think about why. Um, I call these things hydrocarbons. That might spark in your memory hydrocarbon combustion. Right? We combust hydrocarbons. We react them with oxygen. And that's how we get fires and heat. So it's the hydrocarbon combustion of fossil fuels that keeps us warm every winter. The other use of fossil fuels is to produce products for us. Any kind of plastic, synthetic fibers, anything like that, that is made from fossil fuels. So again, these are thousands and thousands of household items that we make from fossil fuels. 
So pretty important for our society that we have these fossil fuels. Now let's bring it a step closer to home and think about why this is especially important to Alberta. In Alberta, we're keenly aware that we are a supplier of fossil fuels. It's a natural resource that we have. And because fossil fuels are so useful in our society, we want to be able to sell those things and to make money off of them. So there's a lot of industry in Alberta that's built around fossil fuels and the development of fossil fuels into usable products. We can't just dig oil out of the ground and burn it. Well, maybe we could, but it's not going to burn very clean, right? It needs a lot of work done to it before it's a usable product. Much less can we dig oil out of the ground and make a plastic chair and sit on it, right? There's a lot of work that goes into this. So that's industry for Alberta. That's industry all over the world, but especially for us here. And last but not least, organic compounds really come into the hot seat in the debate over renewables and climate change. Climate change is basically long-term trends in our climate, but really on the hot spot here is CO2, right? CO2, carbon dioxide, is a greenhouse gas. So while there's different theories about what specifically is causing climate change, CO2 is one possible thing in our atmosphere which may be trapping heat toward the surface of the Earth. So if that's the case, and if we have to limit our carbon dioxide emissions, well, then we have to take carbon sort of out of the picture of our life. We've got to get rid of relying on carbon for fuel and for a lot of other things. And to what extent we need to do this, to what extent we should do this, is a big debate. Should we be moving to renewable energy? Is it viable? Is it worth it? What kind of renewable energy should we use, etc.? So I hope that summary helps you from isolating organic chemistry into you know, its own little box in the corner of your brain. Organic chemistry is something that we can all relate to and it's important in the world around us. I hope you enjoy studying about it.